Oh, good morning, beautiful Expresso family. If you're just joining us, then you are indeed just in time. We've got so much that we still got to do right here on your Feel Good Breakfast show, but we need to get into something that is so important, something that is being recognized on the 10th of October on Thursday. And you may have heard from Carissa exactly what it is about. It is World Homeless Day. And this is a global crisis that unfortunately is a plight in South Africa, something that indeed is a terrible problem that I truly hope that we can continue to try and alleviate more and more of each and every day, each and every year. However, that's what World Homeless Day is about, trying to find out what it is we can do in our own capacity, but also with incredible organizations like the one that is run by Leona Pinar. She is the lady who is behind Mold Empower Serve. And when we talk about an organization that truly encapsulates what we say when we talk about the people who are heroes, even though they don't wear capes, they are still heroes. Everybody, please, let's welcome Leona. <laughs> How are you, my Leona? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for That's having good. me. Of course. Leona, the job you do is so important. It's so incredible. I, like I said, this is a huge problem in South Africa. But let's first speak about your organization, Mold and Power Serve. What exactly are you guys about, if someone doesn't know? Yeah, so we've been operating for the past 38 years. Mm -hmm. And we operate in Hilbrow, it's our head office. And then we also have projects in Kebarga and also then in the Western Cape and in the Ikruleni region. Um, we really drive the change of essential change to, to actually solve systemic problems around mm. homelessness and poverty because it's a systemic problem. Yeah. But we also really are passionate about building thriving urban communities mm. where there's mm. access to effective and efficient pathways out of homelessness and poverty. Mm. That's really our passion. And I think that that's so incredible. And you know, with you saying that it's a systemic problem, I was literally having the conversation with a friend of mine just the other day where we were like, so many problems in South Africa, it's literally because of the system. So it's such a difficult thing to fight, but the fact that you guys have taken that on, this is why I say you're heroes who don't wear caves. <laughs> Thanks, Anneli. Thank you. But now talk to me about this, because for World Homeless Day, your message this year is first walk in my shoes. What exactly is it all about? I think we chose this theme because there's so many misconceptions about who homeless people are or mm. how do you become homeless. Mm. Um, and it was actually interesting, one of our people that commented on our social media campaign that's been running this, this whole week already said that every South African is actually two steps away from becoming homeless. Sure. And the reason, if there's two things missing in your life, if you lose connection to your support structure, yeah and you've got no one to turn to, and you lose the ability to earn an income, the chances that you'll become homeless is almost 100%. Sure. And, and we need to guard that support structures in our lives. So it can happen to anyone. Mm. And that's why we are telling stories of real people yeah. um, from different kinds of lives. Um, we had a story yesterday from Angus who, who went to Stellenbosch University, went to Michael House as a school, Oh, wow. And he fell on hard times and he's busy picking up his life again. Mm. So, so it can really happen to anyone. Yes, there are people that fall into addiction, these people, but it's complex. It's not one thing. And that's what we always say to people. It's not just about losing a house. Mm. There's so many layers in homelessness. There's trauma, there's mm. mental health, there's rejection, there's LGBTQ rejection, there's, there's, yeah. there's coming out of prison and nowhere to go. So there's so many different people that end up homeless um, and you can't label it as one problem. Mm, and, and with you even starting on the next thing I was going to ask about, I think that that's what it is in terms of people being misinformed, is that they think what they know is correct, but actually they aren't even hitting the nail on their head even a little bit. So can you speak to us about the misconceptions that mm -hmm. people have in terms of homelessness? You know, what are the things that they might be shocked to find out when we talk about what the real facts are? Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest things is we as humans live in fear, right? We don't like change. We don't like the foreign in our society, yeah. if we can call it that. So often when we try and start a help center or a service center in a specific community, people are saying, no, 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 you're going to pull the homeless into our community. Mm. And I just want to say that when you start a service center in your community, you actually give them access to a way out. You're yeah. not pulling people in. And we started the Center of Hope in Paro a year ago, and we, we worked with a local um, security group, um, Fort Tracker Road, SID. Mm. And they monitored the incidents of crime linked to homelessness prior to the center opening. Yeah. A year later, 
the incidence rate has dropped with 40% wow. in one year. Wow just because people had access to the right services. So there's a misconception that if you start a centre, it's going to bring bad into your neighbourhood. That's not true. Yeah. The second thing that's very important for us is that please don't give cash. Mm. Cash is not helping. Cash is keeping them on the street. Sure. So we did a cost of homelessness study um, just during COVID, and they earn roughly around 55 rand a day in the Cape Town Super Bowl. For, yeah. We did the study there. So if you think about it, if you work on a 14,000 estimate, it's 256 million rand a year that goes from the public into the hands of the homeless, into the hands of the drug lords. Mm. So we really want to appeal. So we've started a universal voucher system called My Change. Yes. We, we encourage the public to rather buy the vouchers, give out the vouchers and help us build the infrastructure that's needed so Beautiful. that they can get the right help and that gives them a pathway into the right services. Amazing. So that's two of the big things I think that's important to know. Thank you, Leona. You're not going anywhere because you've already enlightened us so much and I feel like there's so much more to speak about. Because Expresso Family, this is something that deserves to be spoken about. It's World Homeless Day on Thursday and we are bringing awareness to that and it is all about the day of recognising those who are homeless but also understanding what it is that we can do, just like Leona shared, on our side to help that crisis, a global crisis that is. Right about now though, I need you to stay tuned right here on your Feel Good Breakfast show because my friend, yes, we're having these conversations but there's a whole lot more on the way. What's happening on your side, Cape Town? It's my feel good breakfast show. Oh, yes, my beautiful Expresso family. This is exactly where you deserve to be. I say that because I can promise you this morning we got so much that is still coming your way. However, we always love to start with the important conversations. On the 10th of October, on Thursday, we are recognizing World Homeless Day, which is a global crisis, as I told you earlier on. And this is why we've got Mold and Power Serve, the organization that is helping people turn their lives around, particularly those that are on the streets. And this morning, we're speaking to Leona Pinar, the CEO of MES, and she's letting us know about a story that I can tell you will touch your heart. This, what we call, is an absolute turnaround story of note, is something that I do know will inspire others as well. We're talking about Uba Bantuli, who was on the streets for 30 years, but then turned his life around and returned home. Leona, I can imagine that these stories, they come all the time for you guys, mm. but I can imagine every single time it's a special time. Yes, no, it's, it's amazing. So mm. it's actually fascinating because I've been with Molden Power Surf for the past 30 years. Mm. And I can't imagine that my whole career I would have spent on the street. Sure. Um, so I always do that comparison. Um, mm. And there's, there's amazing people's lives that turn around. People that ju just grab the opportunity. We've got a lady in Cape Town currently in our staff. Yeah. Um, and she, her dream is to be a writer. And you must see the amazing stuff she's putting out on social media just wow. about her journey and encouraging others becoming a mentor. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to hear more about Baba Ntuli. No, we definitely do. That's why I was like, <laughs> you're going to tell us about him because that's absolutely yeah. incredible. So where did it all start and what's happening right now yeah. with Mama Ntuli? So on the day of lockdown, level five, mm. um, in the morning, we were asked to open an additional emergency shelter that the homeless community could be moved somewhere during lockdown. Yeah. And one of the first trucks that arrived that morning was dropped by the army and a whole bunch of people climbed off. And there was a 70-year-old gentleman, um, Baba Ntuli, who climbed off the truck. Mm. And we started journeying with him and we realized all he had on him was a little bag of clothes. Mm. He had no identity document. He still had his old apartheid dompas. Sure. And we started journeying with him, with our social workers, and we helped him to get his ID, we helped him to get his Sasa grant, because at the time he was already 70 years old. Mm -hmm. Imagine on the street at 70, during a COVID pandemic. Yeah. And um, we started looking for his family, and we could see he had a passion for agriculture. He started at the shelter, just started his own little veggie gardens, and wow. every day you would find him in the ground. And we started looking for his family. Mm -hmm. and. Our head of the program, one morning, she just, she looked everywhere and we knew he was from KZN. Yeah. Um, and we, we just kept asking and trying to find relatives. And the fascinating thing is she was in an Uber. Yeah. And she, she said to the Uber driver, where are you from? And he, he said, this town. No. And she said, do you know anybody there, maybe? And he says, no, my brother is there in the police. And long story short, so through the Uber driver, 
and his brother, mm. they went into the village and they tracked down his family. I have goosebumps. And we contacted them mm -hmm. and then apparently his niece was not far from the shelter. She oh, walked really past really our really. building every day. Oh. And she came in to see and then the family realized they, they haven't seen him for 30 years because mm -hmm. he came to work on the mines and then during retrenchments, he ended up homeless and he started just doing recycling with trolleys. And as he got older, he just couldn't do that anymore. Yeah. And uh, we managed to, to get his family to come through. There was a few reconciliation meetings and he went back home and we get photos of his bigger farm now. He's wow. still farming and he's gained weight and he's just so happy to be home. Oh, um, man. So people always say to me, is there a point where it gets too late? Mm. And I say no. I feel so emotional yeah. right now because I feel like that is such a beautiful story of somebody truly being able to return home in so many different ways. So yes, physically, but also returning home to himself, being able to do things like the agriculture that you speak of yes. and everything like that. And that getting is so identity at yes, 70. Yes, exactly. Yes. And that's what I mean by returning home. Mm -hmm. That is amazing, Leona. And can you talk to me just a little bit about, you know, in terms of how you guys pretty much always find yourselves in the situation of now having having to integrate this person back into society. Mm -hmm. You know, how does that go for you? So we follow a four-phase model. Um, mm -hmm. Outreach and relief is where we take care of the basic needs and the social relief stuff. Mm -hmm. Then we have a change readiness phase, which is really about the healing phase. Yeah. It's about the trauma, the mental health, the physical mental health, uh, physical health. Um, and we journey with them through that phase. And yeah. then it moves into what we call work readiness. Mm. So work readiness is very crucial because they need to learn to work in a team again. They yeah. need to learn to show up on time, be clean, be sober, mm. all of those basic things we take for granted. So our work readiness is really ex experiential work training. Yeah. And then the integration process starts. And, and for that to happen, they need to, to have a track re record of soberness. So yeah. they've had to, to nail their rehab. Um, they have to have an income, a stable place to stay. Need to know where to spend their leisure time. Because often leisure is spent in a bar and mm -hmm. they need to find new ways of doing leisure. Yes. So we, we also work on that. Amazing. Um, so that's part of our integration. Leona, you are incredible. Thank you so much for the amazing work you do to even think that you've been doing it for 30 years. That's how old I am. Oh, so you've been wonderful. doing it literally for my entire <laughs> lifetime. So thank you for that. Thank you for continuing to serve. And I hope and pray that all the blessings just continue to come upon you for the, all the great work that you guys do. Thanks, Anneli. Thank and we you. encourage the public to follow our social media campaign yes. this week and just continue to first walk in their shoes. Amazing. Thank Her you. name is Leona Bina. She is Mo from Mold Empower Serve, rather. And this morning, of course, getting to hear about the likes of Babantuli is always so touching to the heart. But also, I do believe that we always need to ask ourselves, what can we do? How can we be part of the movement in terms of trying to end this global crisis that is homelessness? Remember, it is happening on the Thursday, 10th of October, that we are going to be getting into more of how we can be a part of making that change. Right about now, though, I want to cross over to Cape Town. My amazing Carl, how beautiful was that story about Bamanduli?